Hello, everyone. Welcome to Once Upon a Time in Black History. My name is Tamara Shiloh. I will be your host. I'm an author, educator, and owner of the Multicultural Bookstore in Richmond, California. I've started a new podcast that can be heard on Anchor, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. So check us out and be sure to visit my website at onceuponatimeinblackhistory.com. Okay, on this episode, we are going to be talking about Miss Bessie Blonde. She was a nurse, inventor, and a handwriting expert. So, let's get started. Seven-year-old Bessie Blanc Griffin found herself slapped on the knuckles for writing with her left hand. Really? So, she taught herself to write with a pencil in her mouth and with her toes. Because if it was wrong to write with my left hand, she said, then it was wrong to write with my right hand. That incident along with her creativity, would drive her throughout her extensive career as a nurse, a physical therapist, an inventor, and a forensic handwriting and document analyst. Boy, girl was good. She was born in Hickory, Virginia in 1914. After moving to New Jersey with her family, she studied nursing at Kenny Memorial Hospital. And then she would go on to study physical therapy at Union Junior College, becoming a licensed physiotherapist. And then she took a job at the Bronx Hospital. Many of Blount's patients were World War II veterans who had lost their limbs after undergoing amputations. So she taught them to write with their teeth and feet, since she had that experience, remember? She would tell them, you're not crippled only crippled in your mind. So a doctor at Bronx Hospital, he suggested to her, create a device that patients could use to feed themselves. And she did. She spent 10 months developing her first design of what she called an invalid feeder. She worked in her kitchen and used plastic, a file, an ice pick, a hammer, dishes, and boiling water to melt the plastic into a mold. In April 1951, she received a patent for part of the design. She spent the next four years and $3,000, which was a lot of money back then, making improvements, creating a working model made of stainless steel, which she demonstrated at a New Jersey hospital. Stainless steel made it really tough. She received a standing ovation. Of course she did. To operate the invalid feeder, a patient, they would bite down on a tube, and this would activate a motor, and then a morsel of food would be dispensed through a spoon-shaped mouthpiece. The device would automatically shut off between each delivery, allowing the patient time to chew. She was a genius. The U.S. government showed no enthusiasm, as usual, about the invalid feeder, and therefore they would not pay her asking price of $100,000. So she located a Canadian company that agreed to manufacture the device. Go, girl. She eventually signed the rights over to the French government for use in its military hospitals. Yeah, get up off the floor. As Blanc continued working as a nurse, she began noticing patterns in her patient's handwriting. It would change as they progressed in their physical therapy. This discovery not only inspired her to publish, mind you, a technical paper on medical graphology, how about that, but also expanded her career in forensics. In 1969, her career took a turn. She studied to become a forensic scientist and entered into law enforcement. 
As a forensic scientist, she read slave papers and Civil War documents. So in 1977, she became the first African-American woman to work for England's Scotland Yard. She had to go way over there. She would later start her own business using her forensic experience to examine documents and slave papers and Civil War documents until the age of 83. I bet she found a lot of good stuff. She was an avid public speaker. She traveled nationwide and talked to school audiences, civic groups, and other organizations about her life's work, which was really fulfilling. She, known as Savior of the Handicapped, she died December 30th, 2009 at the age of 95. Now imagine that. You've been listening to Once Upon a Time in Black History. Again, my name is Tamara Shiloh. And you can find us at our website at onceuponatimeinblackhistory.com or on Anchor, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And don't forget to visit my multicultural bookstore at www.multiculturalbookstore.com. See you next time.